Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? This is Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Real Life Trading. Hope you're having a great Friday. The markets have been slow today. I only placed one day trade today. It was for a small loss, and that's uh, that's really been about it. Not much else going on in the markets. We do have, in my opinion, a pretty nice morning star reversal pattern on the DIA. This is the ETF that tracks the Dow Jones Industrial. So my thought is if we breach 175.07, we should move a little bit higher. Again, that's just my thought, my goal, kind of my hopes because I'm in a call or two potentially on the DIA. So if it does bounce, it should. I think we have really, really good volume the last few days. Great hammer candle. We're out of support. Here's your hourly chart. And we just keep banging this resistance. So right now we're kind of forming a little bit of a pennant pattern, I think. And uh, again, if I don't think we do, but if we gap up on Monday and we end this market with some black candles on the hour, I think that could be a really strong signal to be a little bit more bullish than bearish. We still have plenty of time for the market to be open. Anything is possible. So all this analysis is subject to change due to volatility. So there's the Dow Jones Industrial. Here's the SPY. Check out the SPY. Now on the SPY, we had analysis. We had a lot of analysis for some weekly credit spreads. So in fact, we got the SPY 210, 211, 204, 203, Iron Condor expiring today. We got into that Wednesday for 14 cents, 14% 14 ROI since Wednesday. That's incredible. So that's expiring today. Um, if SPY moves above 209.86 in the next three hours of the market, I would just simply exit that particular spread and just leave it alone. A uh, good friend of mine, Troy's in that one. John Higgins is in that one, a few others. Shout out to Carrie Ann, who's also in a big longer term uh, iron condor on the SPY. And also did some analysis today. If you're interested, the SPY is still sideways. In fact, we are dead smack dab in between the 100 and 200 simple moving average. And also, I believe John Bollinger posted on his personal Facebook. For, uh, yes, me and Bollinger are personal Facebook friends. And no, it doesn't really mean anything special. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's friends with everybody, whoever requests him. But anyway, Bollinger posted on his Facebook that the S&P has the tightest Bollinger Band width um, on the monthly chart, I believe he said, that it's had in since like 1987 or something. Something to that extent. So here is uh, SPY on the monthly. I have to move all this stuff over, but you can see it's it's getting kind of tight. Um, it might have said weekly because it doesn't look that tight on the on the monthly chart. Here's the weekly. Maybe it's the weekly. Ah, it might have been the weekly. So there's the weekly. It is pretty tight for sure, You know, showing that it's just really not that volatile. So at the moment, my overall analysis from that is actually a longer term iron condor on the SPY. So the long term iron condor, we got the short term expiring today. We got the 201-200 expiring next week. And the one that I did analysis for today that you still have the opportunity to hop into if you agree with the analysis is a 201 198, 215, 218 for 84 cent limit. That pretty much says, unless the SPY moves below here or moves above here by the third Friday in September, we're gonna make about 28% return on that particular investment. It's kind of interesting, right? The SPY is range bound. I'm excited to see it continue to trade sideways and interested to see what it does overall. Let's go check out Apple. Uh, I did actually have a Periscope live broadcast today. I don't know if you guys know what the app Periscope is. I'm kind of new to it, checking it out. But I, anyway, I requested to see what some people want to talk about. And I got Apple, Tesla, and Shopify. So I'm going to check that out in just a second. Here is Apple. Apple today trading at a nice little support. Um, I'm still bearish on Apple. It's still below some really, really strong long-term moving averages. And here's kind of my thoughts on it at the moment. As of yesterday, I am going to wait to be bearish on Apple directionally if and when Apple hits the 20 EMA on the daily. So here's the 20 exponential moving average on Apple. It's at about 119.14. So we're below all the moving averages. We got a little bit of a soft support in here, kind of a pennant pattern. And if Apple trades up something like this, we could look to go bearish, look for it to roll over, and ultimately at some point potentially head to 106.16, the next target. This bear call spread should expire just fine. The 122, 123 bear call spread, uh, that's expiring next Friday. Shouldn't have any issues with that. Tesla, also Tesla, um, to yesterday we looked at the analysis for a huge iron condor. My outlook on Tesla right now is I don't really have one, unfortunately. This cap is bearish. So this stock gapped down. It's a pretty bearish gap. And this particular trading plan, this option strategy, simply says this. As long as Tesla 
stays below 265 and stays above 215 by the third Friday in September, we're going to make a nice hefty 20% return and some change. That's what we're going with as of right now. So that's my thought on Tesla. I'm very neutral uh, at the moment. And if you are neutral too, I have a little bit of bearish edge, a little bit of bullish edge. That means I'm neutral. Obviously the outlook on the company, I'm still at some point bullish on Tesla. I think in our lifetime, when I say our lifetime, I'm talking to us 20 year olds. Uh, I think in our lifetime, Tesla could be a thousand dollar stock. I mean, I really don't see any reason not to. If uh, Mr. Musk, you know, maybe, maybe get to another CEO potentially, right? Because overall he's a great innovator and incredible visionary. Um, CEO, you know, maybe they could pass it off to somebody else, but the CEO's job really is to be kind of that visionary person and give the tactical, in, you know, end of day stuff to other people. But if you think about their possible transportation methods with um, trains, right? High speed magnetic trains, the energy issue with the uh, the energy box and the battery box. I mean, there's a lot of future potential out there, and he's really thinking, you know, 15, 20 years in advance. And uh, Tesla, you know, in our lifetime, I think could easily be a thousand dollar stock. So longer term, I am bullish on Tesla. Shorter term, AKA the next five weeks, I'm quite neutral. One other question I had was, what's a technology stock that you think could really have some potential? And I don't know if this is technology or if you would consider it merchandise, but I really like the company Shopify, ticker symbol SHOP on a fundamental basis, believe it or not. And fundamental, not numbers wise, but just what the company does. Very, very interesting company if you get a chance to check it out. Out. It's new, but it really is kind of like Squarespace meets WordPress meets e-commerce meets personal blog meets Etsy. You know, it's very, very interesting. There's a lot of tie-ins to it. And there's a little bit of a triangle pattern on Shopify. So if Shopify could trade down to $32 or $31, again, I think it's a great buying opportunity. We did get in bullish on this double bottom pattern, <clears throat> close above the neckline, retested, and we reap some of the rewards of the gap up. So at this point, Nice big triangle pattern. Let it trade down a little bit lower. Buy low, sell high, and let's see what happens from there. Two other trades that I'm keeping my eyes on that have not triggered yet. First is Sprouts Farmer's Market. No idea what it is. Never been there, but very simple analysis. This is an all-time low, bearish retest gap, high volume. If Sprouts moves lower than 2055, I'm more bearish than bullish. Stop will be $22.42. Here's the exponential moving averages. And the 10, the 20, the 50, they're all curving down. Stop is now above the 10. We'll see what happens on Sprouts. And of course, Twitter. Twitter, I am also bearish on if it triggers. Beautiful, beautiful gap right there. Came down, broke support. Right now we're battling all the all-time low as a old support, new resistance. We're battling the 10 EMA on the daily. Volume is declining. So if Twitter rolls over and goes below 28.36, I'm actually more bearish than bullish. Stop will be 30.03. Target, way down there. 23 bucks, huge risk reward ratio. We'll see what happens, but I love it. The longer it trades sideways, the more I'm interested in Twitter possibly bearish. Ladies and gentlemen, have an amazing weekend. Not entirely sure what I'm doing this weekend, but my amazing uncle and aunt, Aunt Tina and Uncle Phil, are up from Georgia. Got a chance to hang out with them last night at Puckett's, which in Leaper's Fork, I've never been there. An incredible place. If you guys come to Nashville, I'm taking you there. Phenomenal. I love it. The talent there is just insane. So, so good. So many good singers in Nashville. It's ludicrous. Have a great weekend, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you guys Monday. And until then, remember, love life, live life, and trade it. See ya.